Yes, sir. I feel special. Don't you know? I feel well, don't you? For a split second. So she's waving. Yeah, why is this super cold? It's like negative 10 in here, and I know how that feels. Yeah, it's like a big sense of summer. Doesn't mean it's a negative 10 in here. 69? Ha ha! That's a good joke. Actually, it is. That's a nice joke, Let's do it. Let's do it. Go. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even get a wave back. I, that hurts. What? Oh, hey. <laughs> ah! That's why I had to stand there. I stand there awkward for five seconds, and then I didn't even get a wave All right, back. All right, get your notes out. See you. Bruh. I gave you a wave back. It was just a little delayed. Oh, he is here. I know he is. All right, so I tried blowing under the volleyball net today. I did it, but my lower back was cracked. It was instant pain. Oh, I thought that students had told me that uh, Gary French was bad. I didn't see him. <laughs> he wasn't here. Thought that I had seen Mackenzie Schwery, but. Yeah. So she's not here. <clears throat> Got an appointment or something. Who knows what? Well, gentlemen. So. And Jana. Hey, where's the other Garrett at? I just seen him. Yeah, I know. Questions for today are. You're, you're talking about. So what you will write down is this is element number four, hey. digital literacy. Teaching and learning about technology and its use. <laughs> Questions are as it kind of works, I think, with the uh, prospect of going hybrid before us. And by the way, I haven't heard anything uh, about that in terms of uh, memos or emails. So all I know is they're trying to get ahead of it just in case it happens by telling you where you're going to be uh, at lunch, if you're going to be A or B or C. At any rate, one question is, you know, should technology be used to access information to learn new concepts? I think, in fact, um, probably one of the most important things that you can learn, whether you learn it in school or learn it somewhere else, is how to learn on your own. You know, I try, uh, I try showing kids uh, different applications for doing some of the same things. I don't have, uh, we wouldn't have a, a Photoshop on a Chromebook anyway. You'd have to have a laptop to be able to have Photoshop. So if I teach kids how to use Pixlr, they kind of get comfortable using Pixlr if they ever have the opportunity to use Photoshop. Hopefully, it's going to be kind of intuitive. Um, I was having eighth graders using a thing called Lucid Press, and I'm tempted to have my uh, yearbook students use Lucid Press because, you know, if they ever have the opportunity to use Adobe InDesign, you know, they'll be used to it because Lucid Press is some of the same tools. You, you know, since you, you can't download a um, Notepad Plus on your Chromebooks, uh, that's one reason I'm having to use uh, Glitch. It, kind of think of it this way. Now, if you, if you drive a one kind of car, you know how to drive. But you do have to kind of acclimate, you have to get used to whichever other car you're using. So, 
What we're talking about is transferring your skills and, and being able to apply skills in different places. Um, an example that I had today, I, I was having trouble. A really simple thing, I've done it uh, dozens of times because do it every year. I take a photo of kids in painting class and I uh, run it through Photoshop and, and it breaks it down into like seven, not even seven, like five planes, five surfaces and then print that out for them and they have to enlarge it and then they're going to paint five different shades right well it wasn't letting me do this to this one kid's picture I, one the only thing i could figure out that was different is i used my camera for the rest of the class and i used my phone for uh um eli because he was gone the day it took pictures of everybody else so Finally, I, I do what you do. Open another tab and let's do a Google. Is there some uh, discussion board where they've talked about this issue? How can I, what is, what is going wrong? Did they have an update? Do they, did, uh, you know, I doubt it because I'm not a subscriber to, to Photoshop. I've got an older version that's actually downloaded. Now it's at least five years old. Turns out, like the second thing that I searched for, they told me the problem. Problem was, I'm dealing with a six-bit photo, and I need to I need to change it to eight-bit, and then I'll be able to open the filter again. And it, it won't let you use the filters on, you know, like the memory resolution was too high or something like that. So it's hard sometimes to pain the neck. I know a guy. <clears throat> is uh, he, he's got a degree in computer science from Iowa State. And he was working uh, for, for my boss one summer. And, you know, so you would think he knows how to do this stuff, whether it's uh, um, network IT and, and getting the computers to work together and how much random access memory uh, the one, one server has in the office or the websites, right? And we had kind of fun when we worked together on a website because he knew more of this programming stuff and I knew a little more of the design stuff. But, you know, he can't find something. He talks to a, a fellow hacker and asks around. But he does the same thing that other people do. Go to uh, either Google and do a search or go to YouTube and do a search for a tutorial. No? How do you, if there's something, if, you're, if your dad's not showing you or you haven't learned in school how to do something on your car, I'll bet you you can find a YouTube video on it. So the distributor, is it changing the battery? Is it changing the oil filter? Is it changing the wipers? Anything, if you don't already know how to do it, I bet you can find. So the biggest thing that we need for, for everybody to do is learn how to learn on your own. So here's a second bullet. Ask this one. How can students use digital technologies to take the best advantage of their educational opportunities available to them? That's supposed to be our part of our, um, what do you call it, uh, mission statement, right? Using the, the helping students reach their best pot potential with uh, using all of our resources. Well, I, I'm boring you to death because you're playing with a pen and walking around and playing air guitar and not paying attention to me. And I get it. It's hard to pay attention to, to lecture and taking notes. Remember, next slide, the black instead of orange is stuff that you're responsible for writing down. And there is going to be a quiz next week. But let me give you... Quick sermon. Don't worry, it's not a religious sermon. Listen, are you listening? If you're not listening, you're not learning. A lot of learning curve. This stuff has been tough. Hey, right? you're having to do stuff on um, on glitch. All of our classes were doing stuff on uh, uh, what you might call on Schoology. 
Now, some people talk, I'm looking at you, Reeds. Some people are doing the synchronous learning, right? So they're having to learn with Zoom. And a lot of us teachers are you know, having to start using it. It's tough. It's a tough year. Okay. Any class, even if you don't have this much technology or you don't have a pandemic or you don't have any disruptions, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. And, and I love that somebody has been leaning on some of you to get late work made up. But if you force yourself to pay attention and force yourself to do the work and do it on time, even if you hate it, you're going to get something out of it. You're going to learn. So here's part of my sermon. Hey, yeah, I'm not naming names. You all know them. Don't breathe them because this is being recorded. But guess what? There's some people that are supposed to be taking this class and haven't turned anything in. They're supposed to be taking it synchronously and they have only checked in to one meeting one time. Somebody else that wasn't taking it synchronously the whole time, but their parents got COVID and so then they weren't sick, but they were supposed to uh, quarantine. Well, if you're in quarantine, all of this work is on Schoology and you can access it on Schoology. If you don't understand the directions, you can email any teacher. This is not just me. You know, and if you're gonna have Zoom meetings like this, email you the, the invitation, post the invitation on Schoology. You don't learn anything if you don't attend. There you go, thanks for paying attention. So, too much time on the preface on the sermon. Let me get to the how the sermon works for you, gentlemen. So we didn't hear that we're going full online, and we haven't heard that we're going hybrid, but you got your assigned days if and when we go to hybrid. Okay? They wouldn't be giving you those assigned days unless there was a possibility. If you don't do the work and you don't submit it, you're not going to get credit for it. If you don't uh, watch the recorded meetings or attend the meetings on Zoom, you're not going to learn the information on that given day. Uh, I got a kid in an eighth grade class that we're doing a digital assignment. We're using an application called Lucid Press. I mentioned a couple minutes ago, and one kid wanted to, to draw it on paper. They didn't want to do the computer. Okay, I'll give you this concession this one time, but the point of the assignment was to learn how to do layout using this kind of application. A couple other people, they used that application, but they didn't read the directions and they didn't do a layout. They created an artwork. And I was thinking, well, if I wanted you to create an artwork, I would have given you Sketchbook Pro or um, or or Pixlr or you know something that's not a desktop publishing application. I give you an art application. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. Okay? Are you just watching TV? You know, I had a lecture with a kid in in one of my study halls the other day. Again, I think I've probably shared this kind of lecture with you guys before. Your parents' tax dollars aren't paying for the Wi-Fi at the school for you to be entertained. It's not for you to use the Wi-Fi so that you can listen to music or play video games or do the distracting things that we try to block like Snapchat and, and whatever, or to be watching a movie on Netflix or, or wherever. It's supposed to be so that you can get this work done easily and fast. And so that's a pretty important question up there. I like how maybe I'll affect the recorded video. See, it's like I'm pointing at the screen. Isn't that cool? See? But then when we do get it, done, how can students use digital technologies to take the best advantage? Yeah, but when we do get it done fast and easy, then you guys know that's the question. Yeah, you shouldn't have. You should do some other homework. What if you don't have any other homework? 
Then read, write, draw. Practice. You know you how to read a little bit. The more you read, even if you hate it and it's boring and it's difficult, the more you do it, the better you get at it, the easier it's going to get, the less boring it's going to be. By repetition. How do you practice? Have you ever been in a school sport? You, th you know how to practice a skill or a drill in a sport. Practice catching, practice throwing, practice running. Okay, so here's what you write down. And as usual, because I know that you like to complain about having too much to write or too much to read, please summarize, put it into your own words, use abbreviations and shorthands. Uh, make sure you get the whole meaning and the whole gist, even if you're not getting every last letter of every last word. Uh, as usual, there's just about three sentences. First sense dealing with uh, element number four, uh, digital literacy. Teaching yourself how to learn so you can learn on your own. Fancy word for that is being autodidactic. I think he was listening. I don't think he was listening. I'll say it again. Summarize, abbreviate, put it into your own words. You certainly can use some shorthand, but you do need to have, if there's three ideas because there's three sentences, you need to have those three ideas in there. Don't jip yourself by not getting all of the content just because you don't get every single letter and word. Listen to them. New technologies find their way into the workplace that aren't in schools. Okay? Uh, here I'm a teacher and I, I teach a, a technology class. But when I go to my other job a couple days a week in the afternoons or work for them in the summer, we're using a whole different set of technologies. We're indexing information into databases and we're um, researching information on state websites, the straight state treasurer's website, the secretary of state's website, the um, Iowa uh, Department of Justice's website. Uh, so, you know, and you know, it's going to be, you could be a diesel mechanic, you can be a farmer, uh, you can, you can be an agronomist, you can work at a, a co-op, uh, you don't have to be a lawyer or a doctor or, or, or a teacher, whatever profession you end up going in, there's going to be some technology, be a waiter or waitress or a cashier, they're going to change the, the machines, you're going to scan stuff, you have to look stuff up, uh, are you using a tablet? Or are you using a, a register? You know, technology changes and changes fast, okay? And you have to be able to adapt and learn how to use the new stuff, okay? Just like by analogy with cars, you learn how to use a stick, then you can drive an automatic. How are you gonna do when you drive an electric car instead of a gasoline car? Uh, one of the crazy things, Crazy self-driving cars is a whole nother thing. One of the craziest things for me was I know how to drive a stick. I'm not very good at it. I eat up the transmission and the gears, but then learning how to help some farmers, help my father-in-law during uh, grain, during harvest time, do that grain on the go where you're pulling the wagon and he's in the combine and he has to line up next to you. This John Deere's got like 24 gears. And thank goodness it's not an automatic transmission and you actually are able to pop gears and that's not bad for it, but you know, finding the gear and where in the heck you're supposed to be and how you switch gears. And the next thing I know, I'm slowing down and he's going past me and he's going to be mad if he's dropping a bunch of grain on the ground, whether it's electronic, like internet, some kind of computer program, or whether it's a machine, you got to be able to learn to adapt. Okay. Second thing. Workers in many different occupations need immediate information. And that's going to require searching and processing skills, information literacy. What that means is searching to find what you need, processing it so that you have some understanding about it, and then being able to report it out or share it with somebody. 
it may not be as complicated as a 10 page research paper in your English language arts class or a history social studies class. But those three steps, find what you need, process it so that you're able to use it or apply it, and then can you explain it or share it with somebody else? You can do those three things. Like I said, maybe you're finding a, a YouTube uh, tutorial to show you how to do something. And that doesn't necessarily mean mechanics, like how to fix your car. It could be uh, how to help your grandma. It can be how to clean your house. It can be how to get rid of a stain. Or it can be how to do something in coding and, and programming and web design, some, something technological. Um, during my planning period, I know that we might go to hybrid and we, you know, who knows, it could even get worse and we'll have to shut down. So what I used to do is print off a worksheet, give it to a kid in yearbook and they draw a line if they're going to match things, right? Or they pull, put a letter into on a line or fill in the word. How can I make something so that they can type in the word? Maybe I don't want to have to do it as a Google form. Well, so I was watching a video tutorial about, okay, so you take your worksheet, maybe it's a PDF, maybe you take a screenshot of it or you download it as an image, a JPEG. You can go into Google Slides, make the most of it, the background of Google Slides so kids can't change it. And you're just making one slide, you're not making a slide show. And you create these words and the kids have to open it as if they were editing a slide, and all they got to do is drag and drop, move stuff around. You know, it's fairly easy for, for me to learn, but, you know, it's your constantly. Some people have different learning styles, too. Some people need it demonstrated, <clears throat> so they like a video. Some people are auditory, they need to listen, believe it or not. I know you don't like... No, you're having a hard time listening. See, out of nowhere, something about a new hit song. Um, some people would rather like read an article. Some people, this distance learning thing is going to be really difficult because they almost need either hands on or to collaborate. Um, learners must become able to learn anything, anytime, anywhere. I would say if you're not going to write down every word on that whole thing, uh, get that third sentence and write that whole third sentence. Learners need to be able to learn anything, anytime, anywhere. Most adults that you talk to have learned as much or more on the job than they ever did in school. And I know people complain and argue about, oh, school should be teaching this. We should be teaching you how to balance your budget and, and uh, do your taxes and keep your, tax, your checkbook. Well, now we have online banking on your phones. And so you don't, you're not balancing a checkbook on a piece of paper in the ledger in your wallet. You know, so schools do need to teach you stuff, but we can only do so much. If you're, if you're not willing to learn, whether you just don't want to, you want to dig in your heels or you're bored or there's something else that you're interested in. Uh, I heard so many kids today talk about if we go to hybrid, are they going to be playing video games or are they going to be going fishing or, you know, you probably heard me say this a billion times if I had you in, in uh, junior high art or back in eighth grade civics that if you want to learn, nothing can stop you. But if you don't want to learn, nobody can help you. Here's the last one. New technologies emerge. Learners need to learn to use technology quickly and appropriately. If you don't want to get left in the dust, you don't want to get left behind. Yeah. You don't have to do every little thing. You know, if you like Instagram uh, or you like Snapchat, you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to do, uh, what is that? The, the, you don't have to TikTok. You, know? <laughs> you could TikTok, but not necessarily edit all kinds of things and use every single feature. Maybe you just do a quick recording. You know, maybe you were on uh, YouTube and you never got on TikTok. It was doing YouTube. But YouTube updates stuff. TikTok updates stuff. You know, people complain that they don't like the way that their Twitter feed or their uh, Facebook feed looks anymore. 
stuff is going to get updated. It's going to get changed or renewed. So you got to be ready for it. Number five. This would be sweet if we actually get two or three done today and not just one. So here's some questions for you to think about. Remember, there's nine. Fifth element. Wait a minute. That sounds like a movie. Didn't that Bruce Willis in it? Who was the girl? She had these like orange suspenders. And she was like an alien. Have you never seen Fifth Element? Um, no. Really? Pat and Mom never saw Fifth Element? It's kind of it's one of those comic books that they made into a movie. Forget it. Never mind. It was Blade Runner wannabe anyway. How conscious are you of other people's rights? Yeah, that's what I thought. Standards of conduct or procedure, digital etiquette, we call it. This whole thing is about digital citizenship. Part of citizenship is being aware, not only of your own rights, but of other people's rights. So that's the first question. How conscious are you of other people's needs, their rights, their feelings when you're using technology? Do you bother to care? Do you think about it at all? And I'm not just talking about that scene uh, where Professor Hulk and uh, I don't know who else went with them to go try and convince Thor to come back and help with this was, um, time. Uh, And they come into the little shack, and and uh, Krog is playing video games, and he he says to Thor, "That kid, that kid Garrett Groves is making fun of me again and calling me names." And Thor gets on there and, "Hey noob, this is God of Thunder. If you don't stop calling him names, I'm gonna come over there and beat you up." Or right. Uh, we're talking about all kinds of things. So we talked about this a little bit yesterday with the, the communication, how, how you phrase things and whether you use punctuation and whether it's all caps, that says stuff to people, even if you don't realize that it does. And there are some things that you really ought to say in person and not in a text. Um, great one is maybe you've heard this before. The world is full of brick walls, but that doesn't mean you have to slam your head against them. Kids that get uh, cyberbullied, well, turn your phone off. Well, don't go on to Facebook for a week. Well, unfriend them, unfollow them, or even block them. See if you were Bulldog of the Week or not, Jenna. Somehow. No way I'm I don't know how you got Bulldog of the Week, but go get your picture taken, Pat. Three times this year. I don't think it's behavior. It must be grades or something. Then. So Jenna, I'm sorry you didn't get Bulldog of the Week, but apparently Pat and Mom did. And we didn't hear who the junior and senior were because we were too excited for Pat. Um. The other question, you guys, before we get the notes. How, how does your use of technology affect people? I got one that I bet you haven't thought of. Here's one I bet you haven't thought of. I, if any of you have other brothers or sisters, I bet you have uh, experienced this. Garrett? 
you want to take a shower, you got to go to work, you want to go to school, or maybe you got a date, you want to take a shower because you, you, you smell gross because you, you've been to practice or something. And your brother or sister used all the hot water. Done that, just grind your gears. You want to take a shower and it's ice cold, there's no hot water. Right? Because your older sister maybe spent like an hour in there. See, I don't know on the video if you can see that I'm kind of trying to pretend to talk to Jenna. Isn't that annoying? When somebody uses all the hot water and you want to take a shower? No, because I'm always before my guests in the shower. I've got my own man. Well, guess what? When you leave school and you don't have this awesome high speed internet that the state provides to all the public schools and you go back home and you're out in the country or you're in town. I know this happens to me in Little Charter Oak using FrontierNet in Verizon too. Everybody's out of school, like on Saturday or in the summer. And mind you, it doesn't happen at six or seven in the morning yet. All the teenagers will sleep in until 11. But you go home and kids are home at 420 or 520 or 620, whenever they get home from school or practice and they start playing their video games, the bandwidth really slows down in town. So the internet, you're watching a movie on Netflix, starts to buffer. You're trying to enter grades on GMC and you lose the connection. You were working on a project and it doesn't save. Uh, what will happen in our house is that two, three of us are trying to do schoolwork and one of the other kids is watching YouTube or, or Netflix or Disney Plus and it eats up the eats up the Wi-Fi and everything starts slowing down or crashing. I know I've heard about this with kids playing video games, whether it's Fortnite or whatever it is. Yes, Andy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay well here's what you write down okay and we're not quite to not quite to 13 after yet so can you please put your clothes back on garrett people are going to be watching this on youtube or Maybe we can get the kids that aren't here joining us on the Zoom meeting to watch a recorded video. Maybe their parents will watch a recorded video. And Lord love a duck. Okay. Fifth element, again, digital etiquette. Electronic standards of code of conduct or procedure. Here's what you write down. I'm thinking maybe there's only two sentences this time, and the second one is kind of long. We recognize inappropriate behavior when we see it, but people usually don't learn digital etiquette before they start to use technology. So, for example, climbing the cabinets, taking your shirt off, walking around, making random noises. These usually are thought of as inappropriate classroom behavior. They're disruptive or distracting from learning, if not from your classmates, from your own. You, we know there's certain ways that you don't behave. People are gonna think that you're crazy, you don't have self-control, or maybe you're on drugs or alcohol, right? That's common sense, it's the way the world works. So we know that you, you don't talk smack and use terrible language to your aunt uh, Ruth, right? Well, you know, you're on the internet and maybe you're not talking to somebody that is one of your crew, one of your buddies, you know? The other thing to remember too is when you're posting things, doesn't matter what social media platform you're on, 
they're seen by everybody. Anybody in the world can can see them. It, they're not only seen by like five or six of your friends. Uh, the thing we used to say to people, uh, of course, nobody's on uh, uh, Facebook anymore. It's not cool. So they're all they're all on Snapchat, Snapchat or TikTok. But I used to say, if you don't want everybody driving uh, into Omaha on I eighty to see your business, don't post it on Facebook. If you don't want your pastor or your your Aunt Sally, your grandma, to see your behavior, don't post it on Facebook. Kids um, find out that they can't get a job, and what they don't realize is what employers do now, maybe you're on LinkedIn, or maybe you joined, a, um, I think it's called Indeed, now to, to get a job. Those employers are gonna Google you, and if they see those Instagram pictures uh, with a couple of your friends pretending to lick each other uh, or uh, those Facebook posts from the party where you're doing the beer bong, they're beer bong flipping people off or waving your Confederate flag or, or wearing the blackface. All of those things, you know, people are going to think twice. Sex, politics, violence. Any of those behaviors, but really what we're coming down to, too, more than that, is um, just how you treat other people. Not just that you leave a digital footprint and, and other people are going to see your content, but how do you treat other people? <clears throat> I said before, you know, life is full of brick walls. Doesn't mean you have to slam your head against them. Uh, here's the other thing. You don't have to like, comment on, or or get in an argument about everybody's post that you see that you disagree with, or you think it's dumb, or you think they're crazy, or you're offended by it, or you think it violates your rights. You don't have to get into those arguments. Oh, when did we get on this slide? Okay, yeah, it's been up for quite a while. So, Travis, you probably want to write it too. Beautiful. Hope you're right. Hope hope you did. Often rules and regulations are created or the technology is simply banned to stop inappropriate use. Why don't stand up on TV? Why do schools ban certain websites? Because they don't want little kids watching porn. I mean, Among other reasons, I don't know, did you hear that? Garrett said they don't want little school kids watching porn. Give you lots of reasons. One, the appropriateness of the material. Sex or violence, ra overrated 14. Two, the bandwidth and usage. You know, everybody needs to use this. Some people are using it for testing and you're kind of monkeying the stuff up if you're, you know, gaming or, or downloading or watching movies. Three, probably the biggest one, usually with school administrators, is it's a distraction. It's disrespectful to your classmates and your teachers. Yeah, You're supposed to be using your time wisely. You want social time, it's before and after school, during lunch. During class time, you're supposed to be learning. All right? And four, it gets abused. You post people's pictures without permission. You take a, re a video of somebody, but then you overlay commentary about it and you make snarky comments <clears throat> or you cyber bully or you make threats hey you who have been in the office several times this week either either of you either of you guys Two days. At the risk of, um, at the risk of, at the risk of saying something that might be um, misconstrued as as being sexist, in my experience, in my experience, male students will say something that is hurtful or mean or inappropriate in person. The female students will say something that's mean or inappropriate uh, 
on social media. Now, I'm sure there's guys that do it on social media too, and I'm sure that there's girls that will say things in person too, but I don't like this cruelty is cruelty. Wow. Um, I'm discouraged by how little listening and how much talking is going on behind me. And that's a little bit embarrassing to me. If people watch this video, like if parents watch when the student is watching it to make up, um, they're going to, boy, he has no classroom control. And they're also going to say, boy, those, those kids that I can't see, but I can hear, they're not getting the point because they're not respecting each other and they're not respecting the teacher. So I can't imagine that they're taking this one very seriously in terms of, of the internet and, and digital citizenship. Give me this last sentence here again. We need to become responsible citizens in this new society. And if, if the more responsible you are, if you're responsible and respectful and fun to be around, the less likely there are to have to be bans. Schools or employees, if you're doing your work, instead of checking your social media, then your employer won't be as likely to ban you from using your phone during office time. If you're doing your schoolwork or you're paying attention or you're contributing to discussion in class, instead of watching a football game or Playing, uh, playing with race cars like sixth graders do on, I don't know what the racing game that they were play they're trying to play with. But uh, no, not nitro type because it, it wasn't a teacher kind of a thing like typing or math. But I'm just saying, if you don't abuse it, you're less likely to have rules or laws or legislation or policies made about it. But again, overall, we got to treat people with respect and dignity. And that goes for cyberspace too, not just real space. Yeah. Okay, Jenna, have a great weekend. Anybody else that's watching this, uh, especially looking for Garrett and um, Tommy, if you missed this, and uh, Mackenzie now, if you